around 26 weeks, I started getting contractions that were two minutes apart. I was with a different OBGYN at the time. We couldn't figure out why it was happening. They just kept stopping the labor. Almost 32 weeks, I had a growth scan because I just felt like something was wrong. She had had a neck mass. I was terrified. Am I gonna make it through this? And is she gonna make it through this? When they had found those things, they had sent me immediately up to Yale to maternal fetal medicine. This is where we were supposed to be. When she arrived, she was 33 weeks pregnant. We did the ultrasound and we confirmed that there is a large neck mass extending into the chest, which was leading to obstruction, which is expected to prevent this baby from breathing by itself after birth. So we brought this up to the fetal care center meeting. That's a multidisciplinary conference where we discuss all of these cases with our maternal fetal medicine colleagues and ENT teams. We went through the prenatal imaging to begin the discussion of appropriate care. And this would be an exit procedure. We take advantage of the pregnancy physiology that allows us to keep the placenta in place approximately 30 minutes that would act like a bypass machine for the fetus. While the baby's in the womb and connected to the placenta and the umbilical cord, they're getting all the oxygen that they, that they need. They're getting rid of carbon dioxide all through the mom's circulation. The concern is that if you deliver the baby and the airway is occluded, when that baby goes to take their first breath, they won't be able to breathe, not getting oxygen to the baby's body, not getting oxygen to the baby's brain. The exit procedure allows you to maintain circulation from the mom to the baby while you manage and secure the airway. One of the most important things in the fetal care center, which I call it as glue, is the fetal care coordinator. Everybody comes together with the help of the fetal care center coordinator. I met with Diana. I love her. <laughs> she was somebody that um, I always turned my head to there when I had questions, when I felt unsure of something. And Dr. Batiar just continued to make me feel so comfortable along with everybody else on the team. I wanted to know every possibility of what could happen. And they made sure that they shared every single piece of that with me. These are rare events. It doesn't happen every day. But when it happens, the first thing is to prepare the team, train the team. We had several sessions of going over that protocol, making sure that everyone knew their roles, walkthroughs in the operating room to know exactly where everyone's going to stand, what everyone's going to do, and then to walk through a management of complications if they were to arise. At 34 weeks and six days, almost 35 weeks, some are presented in preterm labor. That was something that we were expecting, but hoping that that would not happen. Dr. Batiar hooked me back up to the monitor. He had came back maybe about an hour and a half later and said, I've made my decision. We're doing the surgery in an hour. At that moment, we activated the standard operating procedures. Everyone was informed and the whole team came together within maybe an hour. My guesstimate was that there were approximately 40 people in that OR caring for summer at that time. And once the fetus is delivered up to the shoulder, it's positioned in a way that the surgeons can have access to the upper airway. I myself then took a look in the baby's mouth and tried to take a look at the windpipe. Uh, using my partner's assistance, we were able to manipulate the neck mass enough to get a good view of her windpipe and place a breathing tube. They had a by time of 30 minutes. The intubation happened in 30 seconds. Working with the, the NICU teams, uh, we're able to see if baby is otherwise healthy and safe and able to get some other tests and labs, other imaging, to really get a better assessment of what this neck mass is like. I woke up and I knew that I was alive, and I knew that she was alive. And that was when everything was kind of like more of a deep breath. About two weeks later, we were able to head back to the operating room. Um, and this time we were able to successfully remove the neck mass. And I've been seeing her in follow-up to make sure everything is healed appropriately. And we have a continued relationship with both mom and baby, which is great. Everybody that took care of her in the NICU, we couldn't thank enough for everything that they did for her and for me during my surgery. Everybody just always gave us that sense of comfort in such a scary, fearful, and terrifying time. Everything starts with respect to each other, dedication of every single person to this, believing in the group, the team, 
And one of the most important things is being supported by the system, the Yale New Haven Children's Hospital and Yale Medicine. The system believes in you that you can deliver this. And it is, again, not one person's success. It is a whole team. If any one of those people weren't there, this would not be possible.